second. And we are live. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Good morning. Louise. Or I should say good afternoon. <laughs> I'm, I'm, going to, I, I'm going to try and pronounce your name correctly. Uh, Louise Laroe. And um, I'm so delighted that you've joined the interview. Uh, I met you exactly a year ago in New York. We'll talk about that. Yes. Um, but I'm I'm going to tell everybody that this is a very exciting and a non-ordinary uh, interview for me. Uh, I had to convince all of your uh, confreres there at the uh, New York Public Library that it was kosher to interview you. Um, <laughs> that I wasn't going to ask you any untowards questions. Um, and um, I'm so I'm so happy you're here. For everybody, Louise is. I'm going to call you the the chief honcho of the New York okay. Public Library for Children. Okay. You have you, I'll, you have I'll, a take, I'll take that. You have a better description. Go ahead. So I am the managing librarian at the Children's Center, which is located in the newly renovated Stavros Yarkos Foundation. So I am. So my building is located directly across the street from the Historic Choice Building, uh, which is the one that people often recognize in on TV or in the movies. Um, but I have worked all over Manhattan and branches on Staten Island. So I've been working for the library for over 25 years. Time, time has flown. Time has flown. You started. You started in kindergarten. We'll we'll say that. I'll, I'll take that. Yes. <laughs> so so I I was actually I had uh, I was at the SCBWI meeting, and I said, well, I actually before I go back to Israel, I have to go into the most famous library in the world, uh, and of course, the most famous library in the world is now across the street uh, from where everybody thinks it is, and. Um, and then I found this wonderful place. It seemed to me there was a million books there. You say there's only 60,000, but I think there's a million. We have a lot. We have, we have a big selection and we're very lucky we have the space. We moved, uh, we moved into our new space June 1st of 2021 after we were supposed to move during the pandemic. And obviously that was delayed by a year. Um, but we were able to move into a new space and we had a lot more shelf space which was fantastic. So we really were able to expand our collection. And so people do come and see us from various neighborhoods of New York City and the tri-state area to look at the collection because we do have the ability to hold on to books for longer than sometimes our neighborhood branches can hold on to them. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about um, what your day looks like as the chief librarian of the children's books. Um, what, what, what are the exciting parts of your day? What makes so you call, excited to come to work? <laughs> well, I really love my job. Um, I've worn many different hats at the library over the years, and I call myself the early bird librarian. Um, our location opens at 8 a.m. during the week, and I'm often the 8 a.m. librarian. Um, so I'm able to uh, hit the ground running uh, at, the, at the crack of dawn. Um, it's, it's For me, it's a mix of because I'm the head of the children's division, I have to balance uh, the management part of my job, but I'm also able to uh, take part actively in public service and doing programming for kids, which is what I've always loved. I have had jobs in the past where I was more behind the scenes and I wasn't really working in one neighborhood branch in particular. And I missed not knowing the kids in the neighborhood. That was one of the things I missed. I would. Yes, I would have the opportunity to go visit other libraries and go do school visits, um, but I really missed not knowing my local families and having a chance to see the kids grow up. Um, years ago, when I took over this job, when we were located across the street, I had a little girl named Charlotte, and she was one of the first babies uh, that would come and attend our baby lab sit programs. And this past winter, I was at the desk early one morning by myself and it was very quiet. And I looked up and there was a young lady standing in front of me and it was Charlotte at age 11. And I recognized her. Uh, it was, she had a very distinctive face and it was really amazing. I was like, it makes me feel a bit old sometimes, but it's lovely to see the kids grow up. Uh, and so I really enjoy 
the public service because people often think, oh, librarians, it's all about the books. Books are fantastic. I love books, but really it's about customer service and public service. Luckily, I'm an extrovert. Uh, I, lo I love talking with people. And uh, sometimes I think people think I talk too much about the books and they're like, okay, yeah, you've sold us on the book. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, but it's the public service part of my job is the part that I love. I love the most. Um, so I often call myself a book detective when we have uh, school groups come in and I have to describe, they want to know about the library and what I do. I think people have the idea that librarians sit at their desks every day and read books. I'm like, well, not really. I read on my own time, but in reality, I'm a book detective. I, I'm always hunting for books for school, for fun reading, and trying to keep an eye on things that I would like to share with kids during programs of different types. Um, so book, book detective is what I like to call call myself. So I, I'm uh, so so Madam Book Detective. Um, I'm guessing that um, the the programs often involve reading, uh, reading to kids. Um, uh, this is what I have in my mind when I think of library activities. Uh, what else is there beyond uh, having somebody read a story uh, to children? Well, with our early literacy programs, actually, there. for example, when we do our baby lapset programs, we actually don't really have books. It's really more about rhymes, rhymes and songs. Um, we're really trying to model behavior for caregivers and parents, and it also gives parents and caregivers a time to social, socialize with each other. If we are sharing a book, we actually hand out a copy to each family so that the parent or the adult can sit with the baby on their lap and read the book in their hand. Because doing story time for babies and holding up a book in the front of the room, babies can't focus on, on the book. You, we, so, you, you, uh, sorry, yeah, you and I had a discussion a year ago, I remember. Uh, I asked you what, do you, what are you looking for? What should publishers be doing to help librarians? And you said, Big pictures, big font. Yes, uh, it is when you're working. So this morning, it's, it's Thursday morning here in New York City. Uh, it is Toddler Palooza. So we have three sessions of toddler story time on Thursday mornings. It is wild. The children's room is probably exploding right now. Um, and I'm always looking for books for the one, the one and two three-year-olds um, that are short and have bright pictures that are very clear. So if I am holding up a book at the front of the room, kids uh, can, can see the images. Because there are a lot of wonderful books, fantastic artwork, where if you're holding it up at the front of the room, people can't see the fine details. It's a book that is better maybe one-on-one. -on -one. So for example, um, my one of my favorite uh, all-time uh, authors, illustrators, is Marie, uh, Marie-Louise Gay. And she does fantastic illustrations. I give her books away uh, as baby gifts all the time. Um, but her her images, her illustrations are best looked at one on one because then you can see the fine details, the things that Louise, are happening. Uh, in the you, image. You're allowed to open the book up and show us uh, an image. <laughs> okay. No problem. So, so Stella and her brother, uh, Sam. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends. So sometimes in English, he is Sam, but in French and in Spanish, he is Sasha. Um, so the books are published in various languages. But I think that these images are better, better poured over one on one. Um, so I love I love her books. I, I recommend them all the time to parents. But I have a hard time. I would have a hard time using them for story time unless I was projecting it on a big screen. And for little kids. Screen time is 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 we li we limit the projecting on a screen is not really the best for little kids. Um, or or, so or for, buying twenty copies so that you can all sit or, around. Or buying we could buy twenty copies. Um, uh, of of board when we do with the baby the baby laps at programs we'll have board little board books that um, that we could then wipe off <laughs> because and they're chewed on. We have little teeth marks in the corners. The, some of the corners are damp. <laughs> It's always we always have we always have a good time, but I'm always looking for those books that are short, um, that are short that have the bright clear illustrations 
that I could use with a huge audience. Because when you have 20 toddlers running around and they don't sit still, they're all over the place. Um, and you have 20 to 25 adults in the room. It, it gets boisterous and it gets, it's exciting. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, but I like having things that will draw the kids in that are clear to see from wherever you're standing or wherever you're seated, you can see the images. So, okay, but, but clearly the big publishing houses uh, produce books for the mass market and not necessarily for libraries. Uh, That's right. Still, still, they are very, very eager to curry your favor. Um, and that's not because you buy a zillion books. And I don't think you pay $2,000 a book uh, as a medical library might. Um, so why, why are they so interested in you? I think I know, but you tell us. I think that we have such a... Um, I think that libraries are the best deal out there. Um, I think that we so we tell kids that when we have school groups come in, we say, what is the difference between a bookstore and a library? And so, and I say to, to people, it doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter uh, your income level, where you live, uh, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, what language, doesn't matter. Everything at the library is free. And um, two years ago, the library got rid of overdue fines for everyone, which was wow. fantastic. The librarians, we'd been asking for it for a long time. And I, I can, think- I can, I can come back to the States now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, like, I'm Canadian. People, <clears throat> whenever I mention that, people are always yeah. referred to the sign, the Jerry Seinfeld episode yeah, where he, yeah, the lost yeah. book in the library yeah. and the fines. And although we, librarians think it's hilarious, we receive books that are <clears> sometimes <throat> 50 years late. There was one recently that was 90 years late up in up in uh, the suburbs of New York City. And um, I always tell people, return your library books because your family will judge you. If something happens to you and you have overdue library books in your attic, your family will judge you. <laughs> so we, we try to make it a fun thing. We tell kids, no matter how long it's been hiding under your bed, just bring it back. The librarian just want, wants the book back. Um, and if you love it that much that you don't want to give it up, that's the sign that, that mom or dad should maybe buy a copy for a holiday or for a birthday coming up. Um, but the library is free. And so, and I tell kids, sometimes people feel obligated. When I was a child, I felt obligated to read a book to the end. And as an adult, I'm just like, I don't have time. If, if I'm not into it, if it's not taught speaking to me, I put it aside, try something new. Um, and I tell kids that all the time. If you don't have to read it for school or for an assignment and you've tried a few chapters and you don't like it, put it down. Try something else. There's always something else. And you don't have to feel badly because you didn't buy it. You got it from the library for free. And if you don't like it, you don't have to feel bad because it didn't cost you anything. You just return it and somebody else can try it. And maybe somebody else will love it and feel very differently about it. So that's something that I often I often tell kids. And I, I'll, tell, I'll tell kids, I'm like, it took me three tries to read the first Harry Potter book because I just, it, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. And I said, it's okay. It's okay to put it down and try something else. And maybe you come back to it. Maybe you don't, but a library lets you do that um, guilt-free. You don't have to feel like, oh, well, it, I bought this. Now I have to, if you don't like it, it the library is fantastic in that way. And I grew up in a small town in Southern Quebec, up Canadian, and our, it was a very uh, uh, we, we want to know so um that was my next question uh, oh okay you know you, you, you're you're perfect um i i can just sit and smile um you're reading my mind uh but which small town because don't forget je suis né au canada you know and i lived in utawe which is at border al and uh, i know a little bit about quebec um and so what when you say a small town après de quoi so, so this is the mouthful. It's Saint-Jean-sur-Richelieu. Um, it is between the U.S. Canadian border and Montreal along the Richelieu River. Okay. And um, I grew up on a small blueberry farm in a section, and what used to be a village called Lacadie. And uh, so I did go to the public library uh, as a child. There's actually an old photograph, an old newspaper article of me and a couple, some of my friends, uh, in a story time and the librarian um, who I think was, a, I believe was a volunteer. She, her name was Germaine Barrière. 
and she was doing story time and my friends and I were all sitting there and the local reporter took a picture of us. So I've been using my family. Uh, my mother is also a librarian, so it should be no surprise that I use the library. She's a cataloger, so she always preferred the back, the back of the house, um, the back of the house uh, in terms of libraries. But I have been going to libraries, and growing up, the majority of the books in the local library were in French. And when I was growing up, I had a learning disability, and so for me, just having the world of reading open for me in fourth grade uh, was amazing. And for me, it was so much easier. I could I could read in French, but it's so much easier for me to read in English and I could speed read in English. Oh, and hold on, hold on. Oh, the verse for a minute. So <laughs> what, what difficulty did a brilliant person like you have? I'm dyslexic. Okay, so you, you were dyslexic en français, but uh, pas en anglais? No, 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 in, in English. Um, but reading was hard enough for me in English mm -hmm. um, so that when I really started reading for pleasure, I was reading in English because I could read so much faster. It was simpler for me. Reading in French is okay, but and I, now that I've been in New York for so long, it's a bit more of a struggle. Um, but in, in school, I had I had to read in French and I, and I, I could do it, but I always preferred to be able to read to read in English because it was the I it was more pleasurable because I could read faster um, but the local library had a limited English collection so having coming to New York and having this huge collection uh, was really it's really wonderful uh, 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 like, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves here I, I, I'm, okay. intri I <laughs> I'm intrigued by your French Canadianness. okay uh, so let, let, let's delve into this a tiny bit. We have lots of time. Um, a, the commotion is on the other side of the wall, and uh, you're here with me right now. Um, I, I can't hear toddler time. It's okay. <laughs> exactement. So, so in this culture of, of uh, Quebec, which is, which is somewhat French, but in a very different way to, to, to France, uh, what are the, children's, the French children's books like in Quebec? Are they from France or are they a Can Canadian? No, there is a there is a uh, there is a Quebecois publishing uh, like Marie Louise Gay. There, there's oh no, there's many author illustrators in in Quebec. So there are definitely uh, Quebecois book creators. Um, but there are also there are also, for example, yeah, there are books that come over that come over from France. Um, I know that when I look at books that are published translations that are published by Groundwood Books in Canada, uh, there are many, many books that are brought, or sometimes I look at the book and I'm kind of like, hmm, and I look at it and I'm like, oh yeah, it's a, trans it's a, it's, it's a French translation from France. Um, uh, no, there is, a, there is a very active community. But as, but growing up, no, we, we, our family read in French and English, but when I, reading aloud was a struggle for me in school. And it was really, it was very, very difficult. And when I finally discovered that I could speed read on my own and not have to do it, even as an adult. So here's what I'll admit as a librarian. Even as a librarian, I pick and choose my books very carefully. Because remember, a librarian, let me let me pick a, pick a book here. A librarian is not reading the book like this to the group. They're not. They're reading the book on the side. And so I'm reading it to the side, so I so font placement of font, image placement of font, the type of font, how wordy it is, uh, is all very important for me. So I always, I rarely will just take a book and start reading it because I just never know what I'll come across because I work around. I'll call them my limitations. Um, do, do you do you prefer the sh the short? Because you know, back in the day when I was a kid, it was nothing for a picture book to be a thousand words long uh even more um today it's taboo to 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 write a picture book manuscript that's over 500 words usually ones that are there are ones that are longer and for example folk tales folk tales and fairy tales tend to be tend to be uh wordier and i will and, and it's fine to me it's really um when i look i look at book design so you look at story I, look, I mean, the story has to have a hook, has to draw, has to draw the ch children in, especially a group of children where you might have some reluctant readers. You want to have a hook to get the kids in. Um, 
you and want hook, to look at the, the hook. Ha, the, the hook has to come very early. Yes, uh, you have to. And I, I, I like to ham it up. So I'll, I'll show you. I show. I'll show you a few things that I do. My staff were like, "I can't believe you mentioned that." But I, I'll admit it. I'll admit it. I like silly, silly, funny. Body function humor always works. It always, always works. Um, but I, I look at the book design because I work around. Sometimes there was one picture book where I love the story. I love the illustrations, but the placement of the font on the page, I'm like, this is just all wrong. And as as a librarian, I was like, I, I know that I, I wouldn't be able to kind of read this one easily to a group. But I love the illustrations. I love the story. But the design was just was flawed for me. Um, no, but, but are you able to take yourself out of the role of librarian reading because Louise, entre nous, most people do not read books sideways. No, no, and I no, and it's it's very different. Um, but yeah, but you also are, are, are you are you able to be in my shoes as a father or a grandfather? Oh yes, of course, of course, yeah. No, when I'm reading older fiction, I probably uh, when I'm reading older fiction out loud, I'm I think I I have to remember. To, I'm like. I have to remember punctuation. <laughs> I I can't just continue as a run-on sentence. I have to remember punctuation. So I have to take, I have to slow down. I have to slow down and be more careful. Um, and sometimes my pronunciation might just be really kind of interesting, but that's, <laughs> that's okay. I'm able to laugh at myself and um like when I, for example, when I speak when I speak uh, Spanish and I make grammatical errors in Spanish, I always apologize. I'm like, I'm sorry if I'm totally getting the wrong verb tense or I'm saying this completely wrong. But as long as my basic mess, you can understand my basic message, fantastic. But people are always like, oh no, the fact that you're even having this conversation in Spanish, the fact that you're making grammatical errors, like, like that's beside that's beside the point. Um, I, I, I think. I think that because English is your second language, you have a certain sensibility that uh, the well, rest I, of us do not have. Well, I actually grew up in a bilingual household, so actually, I spoke I spoke both at home. Um, ah, okay. But, but I went I went through the English school system, so that's why. Ah, okay. I, I did go through the English school system, so. So um, then, I'm it's even better, you see, because then you have these two mirrors, uh, at the same time. Uh, we had this discussion before that. I think that, um, you know, mostly I like to talk about picture books, um, that they, um, they vary greatly from, from culture to culture. Um, and I don't know if you're going to concur with me. Um, <laughs> they do. I, I, have a, I have a couple samples that I think are, are, are hilarious. <laughs> do you want to show us? What, what have you brought? In this neighborhood, so, uh, so my library is located in Midtown Manhattan. And in this neighborhood, uh, we have we have families from all over the world, um, but in this neighborhood, we, we usually for the last I've been in this location for twelve years. Uh, we have a our Japanese language collection is the highest circulating, uh, followed very closely by Mandarin. I think it'll be interesting to see what the latest statistics say. So books uh, books in Mandarin and Japanese are are uh, very very popular at our location. So I think so we so. This is about, this character is a butt. And these books are super popular. And every time they come across my 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 desk, I snicker because I'm just like, this is totally up my alley. I have no idea what the book is about. I, 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 was, I was looking at this and I said, what, what's the matter with them? They drew a, a butt. butt by accident. They drew a butt by accident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, this is, you know, I always think of like, well, remember in, ja in Japan, they do have the toilet museum and they, you know, where you, they wear Anyway, so uh, I, I, so sometimes I'll come across books. We had once had a, a Japanese picture book, and we're just like, we have no idea what this is about, but we think that the cover has boobs on it, and we're like, so we left a note. We had we had a, we have a colleague who would come once a month and do Japanese story time, and we once the librarians we all got together one day. We left a note and we're like. Nabucco, what is this book about? Uh, because we can see through the illustrations that there's boobs. Oh, 
and like and people are like Louise, you're talking about boobs, really? Um, but it's really funny. It's about a child who's jealous because their mother is breastfeeding their new sibling. Oh, and we're like, okay. oh, okay. We're like, now, okay. But it was just really. No, wait, 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 wait. You you buy books without knowing what's inside. Are you the oh. person who do you buy the books? No, no. So I we, we we have our our team has a say. We do we do say oh we want to reorder we we do help with reordering but we do have so the new york public library and the brooklyn public library have actually teamed up and they have a, a selection team that orders material for all of the branches in brooklyn and with new york public library and and in that we have a youth services team that does children's and young adult books but we also have a world language team that does ordering in various languages so we have a very talented team of librarians that speak multiple languages that order for various languages and for example my colleague uh, Nabucco who works at a library on Staten Island she she will take a look at Japanese titles for kids and make recommendations for the world language team because she she speaks she speaks of these uh, Japanese yeah. um, so that, we, well, what's that? I, I'm from the Middle East I didn't see any books in Hebrew or Arabic in your library. We do have, we do have. So the, the so we do have, um, actually right now we have a display. Um, I think people often forget that they're there, um, but we do have a display of books. Um, dep it depends also on the neighborhood. For example, in, a, in our neighborhood, because books in Japanese, uh, Mandarin and Korean are high, high high circulating they have the most shelf space so it really depends on it depends on the neighborhood and usage um but we have books uh actually french we have a a, a very strong french collection in this neighborhood as well and uh and recently we've had more of a need more usage for our spanish collection in this neighborhood um but one day i appeared in the world language collection and the french books were all gone and i was like what happened like I was like, what happened to all the French books? And and I was just, so I started emailing the, the staff that work on Sundays and asking all of my colleagues, like, did something happen? Did we? And um, it was really funny. This fall, we had some 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 school groups from the local French American school. And I was mentioning that I'm, like, I'm sorry, when you go look at the French collection, for some reason, we have it's pretty empty. We don't we there's a mystery. We don't know what the mystery is. We're trying to discover it. You're and two mom, and two moms at the back of the room kind of raise their hands and they're like, uh, "We have your books," because with a library card, so library card is free, everything is free. Uh, these two moms said we maxed out our library card, which is fifty items. You can, so each library card can take out up to fifty items. Now, as I say to kids, it's really up to your adult. How many books you can take out? How many can you carry? And I show muscle. I have them show me the muscles. I'm like, how many can you carry? How many can you read in three weeks? But so these two moms uh, admitted that they had, between the two of them, they had taken out a hundred books. Um, so I'm like, oh, okay. There, there's the mystery solved. I'm like, oh, I'm happy you're enjoying them. That's great. I was, I was worried for a moment, like what was happening to my French books. But now that, now that we know where they are, it's. Fun, but we do have various languages and things. You know, neighborhoods change. Neighborhoods change, um, and sometimes uh, I know that at one point in the Lower East Side there was a neighborhood branch where there was a big demand for books in Bengali, and it took a while, but they did get children's books in Bengali. But then the community seemed to move, and they were so the community kind of moved out of the area. And kind of shifted, and so the the librarian at the at the location was like, "Well, I have all these Bengali books, and no one's checking them out." So we found a branch in the Bronx that had a Bengali daycare nearby, and they knew the librarians there knew that they could make use of these books. So we just kind of moved them from one branch to another, where they found a happy home on a shelf uh, on a shelf in an, in in another community. That that's the beginning of a great story, you know, about a book who was left behind. <laughs> you know, the, the family moved out, and um, oh, that that that's that's a what wonderful. But Louise, so 
let, let, I want to go to France for a minute, um, England, any other countries in Europe. Um, do you notice that the books are different um, in subject, in, in the way, in, in, in the popularity? Um, I, I really need your expertise. Uh, do American books have a certain kind of direction that's different from, from books from Ireland, Australia, France, and SEPA? I think it's really interesting. I think, I think there's so much more choice now. I think even, I think ar ar around the world, the, the choice, uh, when you think about, when I think about books when I was growing up, um, or you'd even look at, his, the library has a historical children's collection. When you look at what was available, I mean, just the amount of material being published nowadays. Um, but I find it's really interesting that um, different types of illustrations, there's just so such a, a wide range in the US, but also, in uh or, or in from various from various countries um just the uh the there's different publishers uh like enchanted lion here in the us um i know that there was another book that i had that was um it's always interesting to see uh and just expand expand what we have and if they're you know, and things I'm I'm sure there's a lot of things we don't see because they're not they're not translated. Um, but it's always interesting to see. So, for example, Thames Thames and Hudson always has really interesting. They always have really interesting picture books, and they're and they're uh, out of England. And I always like looking at their at their at their books. Um, and also, uh, people who have moved to the U.S. who have various backgrounds. Um, uh, there was a. I know there was a recently I saw a book about an Armenian, a family cleaning, cleaning carpets. And it was an Armenian story. I think it was called Babo's Rug. Um, and I had no idea there was an Armenian rug tradition. And and the author illustrator were had Armenian backgrounds. And I was like, this is fantastic. You know, like I'm all, I always learn something new. I always admit, I'm almost like, sometimes, you know, I always, I'm like, I, I learn something new every day. And uh, I think children's books from around the world are, and, you know, in the U.S., this, the, the range is, is incredible. Um, but sometimes I think, uh, yeah, sometimes the, sometimes I find very avant-garde stories coming from other, uh, other places. And I'm, I, the, I think the, it's really, it's really but, hilarious. The butt and boob books. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm just, I, I'm just like, I think it's hilarious. I, I, I'm just thinking, so here's, so here's the thing. I, I'll, I am all about my, my staff, my staff are like, oh, Louise, they, when I have class visits um, and I, I, I tell kids, I love books and I, I don't want kids, we have a lot of reluctant readers and really it's about the love of books. And I had a dad dad yesterday my daughter only wants to read books based on tv shows or movies like licensed book character branded books and i can't get her to get off of the this this obsession it was like well she loves reading even if it's these books and even if they're maybe not the most literary she she still loves she still loves them and that's important so i told them i said well here here here's the trick i said you say you get to pick five books and daddy gets to pick five books and you choose books that are not branded characters, but that are on topics or themes that she would like. And I said, so then you, you may kind of make a deal. Well, you pick five and I pick five. Um, and here's, here's what we have. But I tell kids all the time, I don't like all books in the library. And then, then I scandalize. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll apologize to all the poets out there. I will tell kids because I want kids to know you don't have to like all the books. And if you don't like it, try something new. Um, and you want kids excited about reading. So I tell the kids, I said, I am not the biggest fan of poetry, but but I think you have to read poetry aloud. It makes a huge difference. And I always I always say I love uh, disgusting, silly poems or poems about food. So my favorite poem of all time, and I and I read this to every class that is old enough, uh, is a poem called Booger Love. Okay, and, show, show, us, show us the book, Louise. Uh, so it, it's by Giant, so it's a collection, Giant Children by Broad Baggert. And in it, he has two poems I read to every single class. 
Um, but Booger Love has a warning. Oh, it says, it has a warning. It says, warning to all children. This poem is totally disgusting and should not under any circumstances be recited to a grown up. And many years ago for Poetry Month in April, uh, different librarians read portions of their favorite poems. And I read a portion of Booger Love. And of course it was a it was an audio, it was an audio recording. So they couldn't see me lick the booger off my finger or pretend to lick the booger off my finger. Um, and so but, but and Martha, I, this is this is a good opportunity to read a stanza or two, dear. Okay. <laughs> so all right. So I'll read it. So this is Booger Love by Broad Baggert. I love this little booger, all shiny green and black. You can hold it for a minute, but I want my booger back. It stays right where I put it. It sure knows how to stick. And if it gets too dry, it just needs a little lick. And then I get that growl. Of course, that's the reaction. That's the reaction I want. Um, and I even at the end of this, and there's one called Chocolate Maniac about loving chocolate, no matter how old you are. Uh, so this is so teachers and parents are like, Louise, how can you say? I'm like, listen, I said, poetry, I'm very particular about the poetry that I read. Um, and I think it's because in school I had to I had to analyze. So here's something that I always try to remind teachers and educators. Analyzing things sometimes decreases the pleasure. And I think that growing up, I had to analyze poetry. And I think that 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 was really hard. Um, so but I do say I have my I I have my favorite poetry books and I do share them. But I, I try to make I, I it's not my favorite, but I make a purpose. I do purposefully always share poetry with kids because people love it. People love it. I've gone to many poetry programs at conferences I've attended, and I, I'm always looking to expand my horizons. Um, although it's not necessarily my first my first choice. Um, so what one uh, of my what, what in, in in high school in Ottawa? Uh, one of the best books that we studied from was an anthology of poetry in grade 13. Um, you know what grade 13 is, and I'm not going to explain to everybody else. But in the in this book anthology, there was a chapter um, written by the editor called How Does a Poem Mean? Not What Does a Poem Mean? And that has really influenced me for my for my whole career. Uh, exactly what you're saying. If, if you know, if you explain it to death, then you've really killed the poem. Um, and maybe the sculpture, picture, artwork, uh, music, et cetera. I once saw Ashley Bryant at a, at, he, he was invited to come talk to the Children's Librarians of the New York Public Library. And he did a fantastic talk and he had, and he goes, you have to read it. You have to feel it. And, and it does, it makes a huge, it makes a huge difference. Um, it makes a huge difference. So I always, yeah. So, so teachers and parents are always like, oh no, Louise, how could you say that? But, like, but you have to, so not every, so for example, some kids are very reluctant to read. And uh, I use my sister as an example. And she'll be, she, uh, my sister was not a reader. She loved magazines growing up. And even as an adult, she's a teacher and she will read, she's a high school teacher and she will read things that she hears the teenagers talking about. Um, so, so everyone's so we'll have conversations about teen teen books, but her her really her love is like nonfiction. So I tell parents I'm just like not everybody loves make believe stories. My sister's like I don't have time for make believe stories. I want real information. I want mag you know magazines. I want real information. And so I tell parents don't forget if your child maybe is not into the you know the fiction or the picture books maybe go towards nonfiction. Um, and I know when we do, when we have classes, we always try to incorporate, I incorporate poetry, fiction, nonfiction, folk tales. I try to cover many different areas because I'm trying to get something for everybody in the classroom. And, and I will do the very silly because uh, I will do the very silly things. So for example, um, uh, there is, so, <laughs> The, the things librarians, the things librarians do for to get kids. No, it, 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 it's very. I, I didn't tell you what what books to bring to this interview. I um, I'm I'm I, astonished. I'm astonished in a good way. 
because and that pro probably you know I met you for maybe fifteen or twenty minutes, and I said, oh, this is this is somebody I want to interview, and I think because we have some kind of you know um, five six year old inner workings here that we yes. go for the um, what the Jews call the Michigan books the outlandish right. I, I I try to incorporate some of those, but I have always I have more serious things as well. I I, okay. I try to do a, a mix. You need. I'm, to do I'm, a mix. I'm I'm glad you do because I don't. Yeah. One of one to be serious. Yeah. So rhyming dust bunnies. So I love this book. I actually have, um, I made rhyming dust bunnies uh, puppets, and I have the kids come up to the front and take part in the story. Um, but some of the kids were like, "But what's a dust bunny?" And they're like, and I'm just like, oh, how do I explain this? Well, I don't explain it. I show it to them. So when we were across the street and I was getting this question, well, what's a dust bunny? This is a library dust bunny. I, you know, the library, you know, the library, the historic library is a big building. And, you know, like, like our homes, dust bunnies appear. And so I, I gathered dust bunnies in a jar so that I could show kids. <laughs> because kids will ask you these strangest things. They have always have interesting commentaries, but sometimes they really stump you. And I was like, how do I describe a dust bunny? So now I have a visual sample for kids to look at. And if anybody ever opens my drawer, the drawers in my office, they'll be like, what does Louise have in these drawers? Um, I have a story, uh, a story that I tell. Uh, it's a short story that I memorized, and I tell it to older grades. And it's about play, a, a father who likes to play practical jokes. And at the end of the story, so he does various practical jokes, but he likes to use fake cat poop. And so when I was learning the story, memorizing it, and I was, tr I was trying it out in front of my colleagues. One of our interns said. Louise, I think you need to have a fake cat poop. You need to hold it up. And I'm like, okay. So I started Googling joke shops in Midtown Manhattan. And one of my other librarians is like, no, 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 no. You don't need a joke shop. Buy some Tootsie Rolls. Buy the candy, the Tootsie Roll. Uh, you put it in the microwave for 10 seconds. And it softens the candy. And you can push it together. And you can mold it to be uh whatever you want it to be so my intern and i were in the kit the staff kitchen one day giggling and laughing making a prop for the story and so there was one school in in battery park city that for a while the kids there knew me as the cat poop librarian <laughs> because i told i told the story to the entire third grade uh, and they they knew me as the cat poop librarian and my colleague who worked in the area knew that I told the story and she goes, well, you mean Louise, you went to see Louise, the cat poop librarian, her name is Louise. And they're like, no, 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 that's not her name. And she goes, oh, no, 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 I, I'm pretty sure her name is Louise. <laughs> she goes, tall, red hair, had a fake cat poop. And they're like, yeah. And, they're like, and she's like, yeah, that's, that's Louise, <laughs> that's Louise. Um, but so, so, I, it's really about, you want the books to click for kids. And there was a new book that came out and and I use that word click because I was so excited. This is um, called I'm From. This is by uh, Gary Gray and uh, Oge, Mora, uh, Oge Mora. And in the book, it says, sky high bookshelf, dusty classics, books that don't click with me, one or two that do. So we need books that click with kids. Sometimes I see pi books, picture books, and I'm like, this is really for an adult and not really for a child. And that's, that's okay. You know, variety is great, but sometimes it's really like, oh, this is really aimed at a, an adult, not really a child. Um, so, but I, yeah. So finding something that clicks, uh, it's silly always works, silly, silly. <laughs> It, it, Louise, is there any, um, like I grew up on uh, Ludwig Bemelman's uh, Madeleine in a house in Paris all covered in vines. Mm -hmm. um, is there, in, in your library, is there a Louise book? Is there, do you have a Madeleine? Ferdinand. Ferdinand the Bull. 
was from my childhood that was the one that uh uh is one of the, one of the ones i remember i remember um the most uh was was that one um i also have a very um well a very the the poor book is taped together with 1970s tape is i do have a copy of peter rabbit um i do have a copy of peter rabbit that is very <laughs> At the moment, it has not only does it have 1970s tape all over it, uh, it also has rubber bands holding it, rubber bands holding it together. I should probably get some archival ribbon and tie it together with some archival ribbon. But it's the book that my grandmother used to read to all the grandkids, um, and that was what that was one of the things that I had had wanted uh, when I grew up and I was an adult. And my grandfather was trying to downsize. That was one of the things I wanted. Is I wanted the books from my childhood. But I remember Ferdinand the Bull from like the library and the Peter Rabbit from, from okay. my grandmother. I'm I'm uh, this week I'm I'm um, watching videos about Maurice Sendak. Um, his uh, classic "Where the Wild Things Are" is sometimes considered the, the best children's picture book of the last century. Yes. Any thoughts? I always I always want to start the Wild Rumpus. I sometimes have, I think uh, when I do my presentations and I, um, for example, when I when I read Grumpy Bird, oh, here, I, I, I'm, I'm getting it on the wrong side all the time. Uh, when I read Grumpy Bird, I act like Grumpy Bird and I have a tantrum like Grumpy Bird. And I think that I get very loud. <laughs> and sometimes the kids are like, you're really loud. I'm like, that's okay. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, the wild, the wild rumpus. Who can, who can, who can, you know, I'm always, I'm always up for a wild rumpus here at the library. And the thing is, it's, and it's a children's room. I think people, people have this really funny notion of like, oh, it's a children's room, it's supposed to be quiet. I'm like, not, nah, no. <laughs> it's, it's a children's room. So the children rule. Um, and yeah, they get loud and they, you know, they laugh and it's not necessarily the shh. And that's something that historically, uh, the, and Carol Moore, this huge historical fig figure in at NYPL and in public librarianship, she she's like, no, those silent, those signs that say silence, no, that doesn't belong in a children's room. Um, you want to have the laughter. And when I was when I went to the American Library Association conference in San Francisco many, many years ago to interview for my job at the library, that was one of the things they asked me, well, which area would you like to work in? And I said, well, I said, I have feelings these two ways. And I said, and the, 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 libra the librarian who interviewed me said, she goes, well, there is a lot more laughter and fun in the kids. I was like, there is. And so that, that is my strongest, that, that's the direction I definitely want to go in. But if that wasn't possible, I do have an option number two. Um, yeah, it, it's a, it's a good time. And, uh, I think that my staff and I, uh, it's really funny. We have this five librarians. We all have very different personalities. Um, we all love different books. And so, 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 sometimes we, it's funny, every once in a while, we'll have a book that we all agree on. It's fantastic. And for example, the fiction title, Wild Robot uh, by Peter Brown is an older fiction book that we, the whole team agrees is fantastic. So we all read very different things, but for some reason, this is the one book that we all agree upon, hands down, Wild Robot. And, and the poor book is never on the shelf because one of the five of us is always recommending it. So the book, no matter how many copies we buy, and I'm sure the people in the book selection office are like, why are you buying another copy of this book? Because it's never on the shelf, because we are always recommending it. Um, and even though people can probably get it as an ebook, I think that uh, kids and families are still the very tactile experience is still really important for, for families. And so, yeah, so Wild Robot, never on our shelf. Um, <laughs> so we, we had to put it on special request for all these families because we're like, well, it's never there because we all, all five of us recommend it quite regularly. Um, we think it's a great, it's a, it's, a, it's a great book. Incredible. Louise, um, this could go on forever. Um... Uh, but um, I would love to have you on in a, a year, in January, next January, uh, sure. and, to, and to talk some more. Um, I, I just, one of the things that uh, 
I'm thinking about in this wonderful conversation is um, something that uh, Ellen Johnston alluded to a few years ago in her uh, talk at SCBWI, or maybe it was last year, no, a few years ago, that essentially picture books are theater. And um, I think that um, this, this has been like of all the amazing things you've 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 taught me and the audience today um, is the wonderful th theatricalness with which you approach and the library approaches um, children's books uh, that uh, they become they become a play um, a good a good picture book may become a play where the kids yes. with audience participation. Yes. So this leads me to my last question for aujourd'hui, uh, but we'll have, I hope, uh, next time. Uh, and that is, um, I one of the things that I would like is for children to write picture books. Does the library do anything to what I call reverse literacy, to have courses, workshops, where les enfants create their own books. They become not only the readers, but also the creators of their own theater of life. We have had bookmaking workshops. So for example, in our neighborhood, we so it's really funny. And uh, for us, we tend to be a little kid branch during the week. So we are not like a neighborhood branch where we see a lot of kids after school. We don't see the school age kids usually during the week. We see them on Saturdays. Um, and so it's really funny that it depends on each neighborhood, but for us, we really are more little, we have so many little kids in the neighborhood, older kids on the weekends. But the library has had uh, book book, um, book making, making the, the book. And also there, there have been branches that have done like writing, writing workshops. And that is an option. Uh, that is an option that branches can definitely opt into. And I know that I think authors, book creators are always very eager to, you know, work with the library or offer, you know, offer uh, programs. And um, so that's yeah, something, something that uh, for us, for us, it, sometimes it's really funny. We, we, we do have local neighborhood families, but sometimes we don't have doing book writing. I would say you'd want to have definitely a multiple week, multiple week or multiple day kind of program um we've done uh poetry um we've done poetry writing uh we, ah. we do have some we yeah we, we have had poetry writing where kids come in and together as a group they write they write a poem together uh, which has been fantastic um a, bo so. a boogers a boogers day is never done <laughs> the kids, the kids, it's always it's always fascinating like uh yes i Encouraging kids to write uh, is always really. What's yeah. your booger story? Was my booger no, not story? yours, not yours. I'm saying, you know, in general. Um, Louise, is there anything that I haven't asked you? Uh, is there any book that you want to show before we go? This has been incredible. My so, my okay, so my I'm... mouth my mouth hurts from smiling so right. much. So my two favorite books. That I've looked. So I, I I've been going through everybody's best books list. I mean, it's always fascinating. All the different magazines. People have different best books. So this is a book. Roll, roll, the key. I'm looking forward to using this with the younger kids. Um, great. It's about it's it's a very, it's a circular story about a pea that escapes from a bowl, and different animals, different animals chase it. Uh, illustrations are just wonderful. It is a, it is a translation, um, but it's, it's fantastic. And so I'm looking forward. This is a, a new book uh, from last year. <laughs> and so here's my here's my quirky sense of humor again. Mr. S about a kinder class kindergarten class come into school, and there's a sandwich on the desk, and they're like, "Is the sandwich really the teacher? Is this ham sandwich the teacher?" And, uh, but the really funny thing is I have to figure out a way. So there's the story, but then there's what's going on in the window, out the window. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to be able to get kids to not only see the, the, the main part of the story, but what's going out out the window. So I might have to do, 
uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll have, uh, I, I'm making my plans for how I'm gonna how I'm going to use this book. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. So uh, those are two of my favorites from the, by, that I've been reading from the last publishing year. Um, but it's always it's always really interesting what everyone's favorites turn out to be. So, so of course, and Louise, you can send your favorite authors to me. I would love to interview them. And um, I don't think, you know, maybe in, in, in uh, Quebec, there's some people that I should love to interview, and I would love to interview them. And, no, it's, uh, it's, it's really funny that, um, yes, there's some, some, there's some fantastic. Uh, Isabelle, Isabelle Arsenault, uh, a, lot of her, a lot of her books are here in our collection, and we're always thrilled. Uh, and, she's, and she's been awarded, uh, the New York Times, New York Public Library have a best illustrated award list every year. And one year I was a judge. And yes, uh, Isabel, 2000, 2015. I think it was uh, 2017, I think, oh, for that okay. one. Um, but it, it so, and, and actually, some of the images in the background here are award winners um, ah, from, okay. from, from, that, from that award and over the years. And so, Isabelle Arsenault from Quebec uh, has, has been, uh, has won a number, a, a, a few times. So, it's always, it's always exciting. Okay, so before I go, before I go. Bunny Slopes, the cutest story. So Bunny Slopes is an interactive book where the bunny goes skiing. So when he starts, he's he's on his skis, but there's no snow. So it says, oh, we need snow, shake the book. And then we need more snow, shake the book harder. And then tilt the book so that he can ski. And I had a little kid in story time. We had a winter story time. And the little kid's like, how is it doing that? Like, how is the book snowing? And all the parents in the room laughed. And I'm like, and in my mind, I'm like, yes. Like, I, I, you know, you know, the, this, the, the fact that he said this out loud, I was like, yes. Okay. I, 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 I've, I've hooked, I've hooked one. It, it was, really, it was really cute. Um, picture books, books are great. Love books. <laughs> I could talk all day about books. So well, I know the, you have and, to go. And, and, No, well, you know, I, I, I'm limited. I don't want to get uh, fired or shot. We're almost at an hour. You know, the average time is 40 minutes. But uh, Louise, if with your permission in half a year or a year, um, I have lots of uh, questions that I have not uh, yet to pose um, or whatever they say en français. Um, I, would love, I would love to chat again. And um, of course, my dream is uh, for your selection committee to bring my book to New York at the Maybe someday. Um, in the meantime, uh, it's been absolutely. Send, send, send me a copy. Oh, I shall do that. Oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I mean, we have a, actually, and I, and I should say this: uh, we have a lot of authors and illustrators who 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 come in to the library, and they want to give me their book. And I was like, okay, well, I said I'm happy. I'm happy to take the book. I will send it off to the library's selection team. On the library's website, there is a place where you can go and they have selection criteria for submitting. But once this, is, this is great because we are now being watched and listened to by lots of authors. Yes. And, and some of them uh, are so incredible that not only are they in your library, but they are faced. Like when I had that one hour to wander around in awe, uh, comme ça, uh, looking at all your 60,000 books um, and some of the faces, you know, like sometimes you put the book face out, uh, were authors that I've interviewed uh, for NBN. Um, but for, for anybody who doesn't have the book in your library, um, send a copy to Louise and it'll go to the selection well, process. Or, or even if you go to the library's website under, under Get Help, there is a place where you can find submissions from your public library. And it also, the thing to remember is that it has to be available. We have to have a, uh, uh, it has to be public, you know, it has to be available or through the company that we order books through, it has to be kind of available. So sometimes we get, we get books and I'm just like, well, where, where is it available? People are like Amazon. I'm like, well, right. <laughs> we, we, we don't order through Amazon or we, 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 there are special, there are special cases for, for certain things, but. Um, I'm like, okay, but we have to, is it, is it available? You know, and I often talk about literary agents and your publisher. Can you get your publisher to send 
in a copy because I realized people who, especially people who self-publish, it's money. You're giving me money. The book that you've paid money for this book and you're giving it to me. And I don't know what the outcome would be. And I always tell people, I was like, I don't know what the outcome will be. Um, I'm not a decision. I'm not a decision maker, but I always say to people, but the library has a submission. There is a submission page where authors of all, for, 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 Authors for books for all ages. Can we see. will. If you, it, 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 you'll send me the link, and I'll publish it with the yeah. interview. And uh, and authors who are watching and listening can submit their books uh, to be one of the sixty thousand plus titles in your magnificent theater, which some yes. people call the New York Public Library. Uh, it you're, is yes. Yeah, yeah, you're you're a frustrated um, actress. I could I can see that, and uh, um, uh, that's not, that's that's marvelous. Not, and, not really. Well, kids, kids are not intimidating. <laughs> kids, kids are so much fun to work with. So, Louise, um, uh, the, the only thing I regret is that I'm not in New York in the library right now. We could like go for a coffee and talk more, uh, but this has been spectacular. We could um, spread the books out all over the table. Oh, yeah. So, um, and talk about them. There's so many things we haven't talked about. Fiction versus informational fiction versus nonfiction. Books that have a message at the center versus books that don't have a message at the center. Um, books that are naughty versus books that are polite. Uh, cultural. Art. Well, there's a million things we still have to talk about. Um, there, there's, some, there, there's something for everybody at the library. And you don't have to like everything. You don't have to like everything or appreciate everything, and but you, there you, there is something for everybody in the life. You, you, well, well, you have to click, and Louise, you have clicked with me, and I'm almost sure that you've clicked with anybody who's listening or watching today. And um, I forgot even to introduce myself. So I'm Mel Rosenberg, and I am <laughs> what am I? Oh, I'm the host of the Children's Literature Channel of the New Books Network, and I've been here with Lu Lu Louise Laroe, who is the chief honcho, chief detective, chief librarian um, of the uh, New York Public Library slash theater for young children. Okay, we'll, we'll go with that. Have a wonderful year. And if you're in New York, come visit her fabulous library and say hello to her if you're lucky uh, or one of her five other spectacular librarians, one of whom introduced me to you. Wonderful. Yes, you're always welcome. We always we always love visitors. This has been incredible. So, merci beaucoup beaucoup and uh, uh, prochaine fois en français. Okay, on peut, on peut faire ça. <laughs> Thanks so much. This is great. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Have, have a great care. day. Bye.